Kings chapter 8, verse 55. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 55. The Bible said, And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And let these, my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God, day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as a matter shall require, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Amen. 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 He is God and there is none else. Amen. Amen. I am very thankful for that. I'm thankful today that I don't have to make a choice. I don't have to have six or seven gods out there and, and try to figure out which one's a good one and which one's not good That's and, right. and which one's going to work which one's not going to work. Um, uh, yesterday, we, we went down to Walmart to get Alex some new shoes, and uh, and they just had selection after selection after selection, uh, uh, and, and you got to pick out the one you like, and then you got to pick out the one you need, because uh, there's a difference, amen? Uh, uh, he needs a shoe that's slip resistant, amen? Uh, uh, and you got to find that. Uh, uh, but slip resistant may not be the pretty one, amen? Uh, uh, so you got to try to find everything you want in what you buy, okay? Uh, sometimes it's hard. Uh, I'm glad that when it comes to God, there's not a selection, there's not a choice, there's only one, amen? amen. Uh, uh, he comes in one size fits all, amen? Right. Uh, Come he on, comes in you. one size does all, amen? Amen. Uh, uh, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, uh, I've got a God that is able to do all things. He's able to deliver from everything. He's able to heal from everything. Uh, he's able to lift us and take care of us. Uh, I'm glad that I've got that one and only God, the great Jehovah, that sits on the throne. He's large and in charge. Uh, and he's mad today. Amen. 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 And better than that, I'm his. Amen. 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 Oh, oh, listen, I won't try to continue on. Uh, uh, we took a short break uh, 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 from this uh, sermon of uh, promises and trials. Uh, uh, I believe that we're going to start part five today. Amen. Uh, uh, and we're going to try to uh, get through this. Amen. Uh, uh, but uh, number 14, uh, in my trial, God promises to comfort me. Amen. Uh, I'm glad I've got a God that loves me enough uh, uh, to comfort me, to lift me, uh, and to take care of me in my trials. Uh, uh, Psalms chapter 23 uh, and verse 4 said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. Uh, now listen, uh, uh, as we look at this, and y'all have heard me say this before, uh, uh, that a shepherd always had two things. He had his rod and he had his staff. One was correcting for correcting the sheep, and one was for leading the sheep. Uh, uh, but here David wrote, he said, thy rod and thy staff, uh, they comfort me. Uh, he said, I take comfort in both, amen. Uh, I take comfort in the fact that my God will lead me uh, uh, where I need to go, uh, and he will not forsake me. Uh, but he also said, I take comfort in the fact he loves me enough to correct me uh, oh, when I'm wrong, amen. Uh, oh, listen, I remember growing up, uh, uh, Mama and Daddy always corrected me, uh, and I heard uh, uh, that old saying, uh, this hurts me more than it does you. Uh, and I think every time they draw back and swing that belt, uh, uh, you lie through your teeth because this hurts me and you ain't crying. 
Amen. Amen. I'm glad that his rod and his staff comfort me. Amen. Uh, oh, listen, let me talk about the disciples for just a moment. Uh, uh, John chapter 14, verse 1. Uh, uh, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, uh, ye believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, oh, listen, uh, uh, you have to back up uh, into John chapter 13. Uh, uh, you'll see that they've had supper. Uh, uh, you'll see that they've had uh, uh, the Passover. Uh, and the Lord has washed the disciples' feet. Uh, and now he has told them. Uh, he said, listen to me. Uh, uh, he said, I'm about to be betrayed into the hands of sinful men. Uh, I'm going to be crucified. Uh, and I'm going to die. Uh, uh, these things are about to take place. Uh, and the boys begin to get troubled in heart. Uh, uh, their spirit was troubled within them. Uh, uh, their Savior, uh, the Messiah, uh, uh, the one that they were expected to come, uh, is about to die, uh, and it's bothered them. Uh, uh, no doubt you can understand. Uh, uh, maybe somebody in your family uh, has gotten sick, uh, and the doctor said there's no hope. Uh, there's nothing else we can do. Uh, uh, they've only got a week left to live, uh, and you begin to get troubled. Uh,
somebody, would you pray for me? If their prayers really go anywhere. Y'all ever think that? Yeah. Huh? You ever wonder? I don't know if they really pray or if they write with God, if their prayers go anywhere. I don't know. Have you ever heard people say, I've been praying, but I feel like my prayer don't get no higher to see them. Yeah. You ever heard people say that? I've heard them say that. Yeah. But I'm glad that the Holy Spirit walks with me so I don't have to pray higher in the ceiling. I just got to look right next to me and say, listen, buddy, I need some help. <laughs> what you got today? Amen? Yeah. If you're trying to pray and get your prayers up through the ceiling, you pray the wrong way. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. Amen? Uh, talk to him. Amen? Uh, and I promise you, he'll get you prayer to glory. Amen? amen. Because there ain't nothing going to stop the Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity. That's the Godhead. He's the third person of the Godhead. He can get an answer for you. Amen? Amen. But he promises to comfort us, amen, in our trials. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. He's the God of all comfort, amen, who comforted <laughs> us in our tribulation. Uh, that we may be able to comfort them uh, which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith uh, uh, we ourselves are comforted of God. Amen. Uh, oh, listen. Uh, he said, I'm going to comfort you uh, in your tribulation. Uh, uh, when things are going wrong, uh, I'll come down. Uh, I'll put my arms around you. Uh, I'll hug you. Uh, and I'll make it better. Amen. Uh, and that's what God does. Let me digress a moment. I can remember when my wife walked out and left me. And Mama and Daddy came to the house. And Mama put herbs around me and I was squalling like a baby. And she was hugging me. And she was saying, it's going to be all right. She said, what do you need? I said, Mama, make the pain go away. Just make the hurt stop. She said, son, I can't do that. But Jesus can. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Jesus can make the pain go away. Yes. Jesus can make the hurt stop. Yes. Jesus can do it. He comforts when nobody else can. Amen. Amen. Yes, he does. When mama can hug all day long, but mama can't take that away. Daddy can hug all day long, but daddy can't take that away. But when Jesus puts his arms around you, Amen. the pain has Amen. to leave. Amen. 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 Pain can't stay when the king Amen. comes on the scene. Amen. Amen. He comforts when nobody else can. Yes. And because he's comforted us, he said, now I want you to share that with others. Meaning we need to hug somebody and say, it's going to be all right. When Jesus hugs you and says, I got it, it's going to be all right, he expects you to learn from that and to hug somebody and say, it's going to be all right. Amen. It's going to be all right. Amen. Yes, amen. And it will be. Because the Lord's got you. Amen. amen. Oh, listen. Number 15, he promises to give help when we need it. Yes. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Oh, listen, Paul said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Now, that don't mean get up and come proudly, amen? There's a difference in being bold and being proud. A lot of people jump up and say, well, I got a God that does everything. I'm just going to go. You start getting all proud like that. God ain't going to hear nothing. You've got to say, but boldly means that you and I are able to come to God and talk to God on a first name basis. Amen. He knows me. I know him. But when I come to him boldly, I also come to him humbly. Amen. Bowing before him. Amen. Because I need you to understand something. When I walk into the presence of God and begin to pray, I realize who he is and who I am. And though I may know his name and he knows my name, we ain't in the same class at all. You, you ever heard, I, I don't know how girls see things, boys see things different. Sometimes we'll say, well, I can't date her because she's from the other side of the track. She's just too good for me. Well, some of y'all 
y'all probably ain't never been there. Y'all just, I have, amen. But when it comes to God, we're not in the same class. He's God, and I'm me. Amen. Yeah. We, I'm not in that class. Amen. I'm not in close. I'm his friend. Amen. Amen. I'm his son. I'm his child. But we still ain't in the same class. He's still God. Amen. And when I come before him, I know what the book says he is, and I know what the book says I am. The book says I'm just a worm. I'm just food for a catfish. I'm a worm. That's all I am. <laughs> but God is God. Creator of the universe. My friend. The faithful one. The chosen. Oh, he's God. And he said, I'm going to help you when you need it. Just come and ask. Just come and ask. Amen. Ain't you glad you're able to go ask God for your help? Amen. Ain't you glad you don't have to come to me and say, hey, can you go talk to God for me? Amen. Now, sinners have to do that. How many times have you had people at work say, would you please have your church pray for me? Because some people just can't pray for themselves. I'm glad I can pray for myself. But I'm also glad I've got y'all. Because there's times when I begin to pray, I feel like I need some backup. Amen. Amen. I need somebody on my side. Amen. To help me out. And it makes me feel better when I know I've got y'all praying with me. Amen? Yes, amen. I love when I call on different ones in here to pray. Amen? Bless the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask. God knows exactly what we have need of. Now, I need you to understand this. There is a big difference in need and want. Amen? You need a house to live in. It does not have to be a mansion. We just want one. Amen? Your need could be a little tiny cabin sitting out in the woods somewhere. And for some of us, that's a We'll settle for that. Amen. Right. Yes. A, a little cabin out in the wood. It, it works. Amen. Amen. We don't need all these fine things we have at the house. But God loves us so much, He allows us to prosper. That's because He loves us. He does give us some of our wants and our desires. The Bible said if we delight in the Lord, He will give us the desires of our heart. But we got to delight in Him. That means you got to do His work, serve Him, be with Him, delight in Him, and then watch Him give you your desires and the things that you want. But He said, I'm still going to give you your need. Mm -hmm. You need to eat? God said, I'm going to make sure you eat. Now listen to this. It may not be steak. It may be spam. <laughs> it may not be a big pot of good collars. It may be broccoli. But God says you will eat. Amen? Amen. I will feed you. I feed the little birds out there and I'll feed you. Are y'all listening? Yes, Lord. I went down the road the other day and there was four buzzards out in the middle of the road and God was feeding them. <laughs> they was eating a squished armadillo. If God will feed them, he'll feed you. Right. Stop griping about what you got. It could be armadillo next week. <laughs> Amen. God didn't say he'd feed you something different than what they was eating. He said he'd feed them, he will feed you. Right. Amen. Amen. It may not be exactly what you want, but God will feed you. Amen. Amen. There's been a lot of times I want a big fancy meal. Couldn't get it. I went home and scrambled eggs and fixed some grits and had a biscuit. I'm happy with that. <laughs> some of y'all just, y'all just, what? Y'all just, what? I, 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 but God said, I will supply your need. God says, I'll supply your need. He didn't say I'd give you a $600 suit to wear. So sometimes we're not wearing a suit to church, are we? 
Sometimes we're wearing blue jeans and a, just a clown shirt. We're looking the best we can. Amen. That's right. And it's okay. That's right. God said, I'll give you your needs, yes. not your wants. But then sometimes God will love you enough you'll get a suit. Yeah. Everybody will get one suit, and they'll hang in the closet and say, that's my burying suit. When I die, I'm going to be in that. Amen. That's my burying suit. Amen. God will supply your needs, not your wants. You will never go without. Amen. God will make sure of that. Yes. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 and 32, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall be we, we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all of these things. Amen. He said, I know you have a need for these things, and I will supply them. Don't worry about it. Amen? It's coming. Amen. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 27, uh, uh, the Bible said uh, that they owed some tribute money. They had to pay a toll. Uh, uh, and they began to question the Lord. We don't have any money. Uh, and the Lord said, go down there and cast uh, out in and, and pull a fish in. When you get the fish in, reach down in his mouth. Uh, and they did. And when they reached down in his mouth, there was money in there. And they took that and was able to pay the tolls. Uh, what are you saying? I'm saying God will supply. Amen. Never would I have thought to go down and catch a fish and stick my hand down his mouth and pull money out. Just you know, think about that. But Jesus said, that's the way we're going to get our money. We're going to fish for it. Amen? Amen. Every one of y'all is thinking, I'm going home, going fishing this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, can see, I can see your wheels start. I'm going fishing this afternoon. The preacher said, it's okay. I get my money that way. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> the only problem with that is, you don't need it. And if you don't need it, it ain't coming. Amen? But when you need it, it'll be there. Yes. Listen to me. I need you to hear this. Not everything that is sent to you comes from God. That's right. You need to hear this, okay? Now this is because this is me. I, I preach best from my own experience. Money's been tight at the house, okay? And I got a check in the mail the other day for $700. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, yes, because I needed five. I got seven. That gives me two to play with. Yes. <laughs> and it's one for the, for the loan company up here because I've done business with them a lot. And I looked at that thing and I said, now this is what's going to happen. I'm going to cash it. I'm going to have my money. But all that money's going to do is it's going to fix me for this month. It's not fixing me next month or the month after or the month after. It's just fixing me this month because next month that payment is $150 and I won't have it. So I'm looking at this check and I'm thinking, <coughs> no. And I tear it and I throw it. So it all it's doing is fixing. Sometimes we need something and the devil sends something because he wants to get you in worse shape than y'all. Amen. You've Amen. got to be careful what you get. Because I'm telling you, thinking, Lord, please send, and you get it. Before you spend it, before you do something with it, you pray over it and find out where it come from. Because I'm telling you, the devil don't like you. And he's going to do everything he can to drag you down and get you in worse shape. If I take that thing to the bank, amen, I'm good for a month. Next month, I'm in a jam, and there I am on my knees saying, God, I messed up. I need help. And God said, you should have prayed over it before you cast it, because I didn't send it. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, don't mess up. Listen to me. I've learned from a lot of mistakes I've made. And I'm telling you, don't make the same mistakes I did. Don't be stupid like me. Be smart. Pray over everything. Let God supply what you need. And he'll supply it in his time. The devil brought it a little early and I was excited. That's what the devil does. Yep. 
you've got to be careful. Amen? Amen. Amen. Be careful. They were down there, and the man come up, and he said, you owe this now. Jesus said, go fish for it. Jesus didn't tell them two days ahead, go fish for it. He didn't. Don't you think Jesus knew they were going to have to pay that money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Jesus was smart enough, two weeks ahead, he knew they were going to have to pay that. He could have got it some other way, but he didn't. He waited till it was due right on time. He said, go get a fish, get the money out, go pay it, we're fine. He knows your need, he'll supply it. Amen. Don't get anxious for things. Amen. Just trust in God. Yeah. What you need is coming. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I hope y'all learning something from that. Amen. Yeah. He will supply your every need. Number 16. In my trial, he promises to draw close to me. And let me tell you something. When I'm in trouble and I got a problem, I want people close. You ever heard the expression, misery loves company? Yeah. Yeah. We get in turmoil, we get in problems, and we just want to drag everybody down with us. <laughs> if I'm in this hole, I want, I want everybody in the hole with me. I don't want to be by myself. Just get in the hole with me. No, I'm not getting in the hole with you. I'm going to drop you a line and see if I can get you out of it. Because, listen, the book of Galatians says, if you see your brother's in a trial over there, he said, go to him and try to help him out. But be careful that you don't fall into what it said. You try to help him, but be careful you don't fall into the same situation. Because sometimes we want to help, then we find ourselves being drugged down. You want to get them pulled out of the quicksand, but you get one foot out in it, one foot on the dry land, guess what? It's going to pull you down because you ain't got no foot. And one foot won't work. So Galatians, he tells us, listen, try to help them when you see them, but be careful you don't get overtaken in the same falls. Be careful. Amen? Amen. we got to watch. Sometimes we want to help, and it just becomes too much for us. Amen? you got to know your strengths, and you got to know your weaknesses. Know what you can do and what you can't do. Amen? But I'm glad i got a God that gets close to me when I need him. Psalms chapter 34, verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Amen. I'm glad that when I've got a broken heart and a contrite spirit, the Lord is close by. He loves us. He wants to lift us. He wants to help us. Oh, listen, I can tell you, huh? there's been a lot of times I've had a broken heart, huh? and I've cried, huh? and I can truly feel God close by. Huh? Oh, listen, when I begin to cry and call out and say, Lord, huh? I can't handle this, amen. Huh? It's hurting too bad, huh? and he'll come on the scene. Huh? He is nigh and close to those that are of a broken heart. Huh? Oh, listen, God wants to mend huh? your broken heart. He wants to help you, amen. James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Y'all need to hear this because some of y'all ain't listening. Resist the devil. Right. We always, we, we'll quote that time. Submit yourselves to God and God will get close to you. Don't leave the middle of that verse out. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you got to submit to God. <clears throat> he said, commit yourself to the Lord. I'm going to be for God. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to get in his will. I'm going to do everything. I'm submitting to God that God, listen to me, has total control of my life. That's usually where we had a problem. Giving over total control. Well, 95% is good. I got to have five. I, I got to control something. No, you don't have to control anything. 100% of your life needs to be submitted to the Lord. Submit yourself to the Lord. Give your all to Him. Then He says, 
said, after you've submitted, resist the devil. If you have submitted to God, you ought to be able to say, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. You leave this place now. You have no hold on it. Uh, go on out. To get out the door. Resist him. Don't just stand up and let him stay in, in the place. If you know he's sitting there, horns on his head, pitchfork, you know he's, it's the devil. We know he's there. Well, he's not bothering me, so I'm not going to bother him. That is not what he said. He said, resist him and he will flee. That means you have got to spiritually resist and say, I have no part of you. You have no part of me. I rebuke you. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ has given me authority uh, over the sufferance, uh, over the scorpions, uh, and over the power of the enemy. Uh, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. You leave Liberty Baptist Church. I mean, you leave the people. Uh, you don't possess us. Uh, you don't hold us. We will Submit yourselves to God. Resist Satan. Have no party with him. Have no hold with him. Cut him loose. And don't just cut him loose. Run him off. Come on, friend. You can't stay. Bless him, Lord. This is not your home. You are not welcome here. Amen. Yes, this is Lord. God's house. Yes. Amen. Yes. And he said, after, after you've submitted to God, after you have resisted the devil, he said, then you draw nigh to God and God will draw nigh to you. That's right. He is Satan out of the way because he's got between you and God. You resist him and get him moved so you can draw close to God and God will draw close to you. That's a problem, folks. We just said, all right, I'm not going to give in to him, but we ain't run him off. He's still there. He has no place. you got to run him off. You've got to stand up. You've got to say, no, I rebuke you. Get out. This is one of them things where Jesus said, two will bind this thing on earth and it will be bound in heaven. Or two will loose it and it'll be loosed. And I'm telling you, I don't want him loose. I need him bound. I need him tied up. I need him chained down. I need him gone, amen. And I don't need just me. I need a church full of folks praying up and rebuking him to get out. Amen. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Because if you're not going to pray for it, he ain't leaving. He's just going to say, well, I'm not going to bother you this week. I'll leave you alone. I'm going to sit over here in the corner. But in a couple of weeks, i got your number. He ain't sitting in the corners. He ain't welcome here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 17, verse 27, that they should seek the Lord. If happily uh, they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Uh, Hallelujah, I'm here to tell you, God's not far from any of us amen. today. Hallelujah, God is close, amen. All you got to do is feel for him. All you got to do is look. Oh, they said there, happily. Oh, that means just haphazardly they might be looking. I'm not haphazardly looking for the Lord. I purposed in my heart to be with the Lord. I purposed in my heart to be close to God. That's what I'm resolute in doing, to stay with God, amen. That they should seek the Lord, and happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. He ain't far. Amen. Praise God. He's just within arm's reach. Yes. Not my arm. His arm. Because he's got me. Amen. Just like you got your kids when you're walking across the parking lot at Walmart. Get over here next to me.
me. You can't walk in the middle, so somebody will run you over. You hold them kids tight. I'm within arm's reach of the Lord at all times because he knows Satan's trying to get at me. He'll pull me over. Uh-uh. Right here. Right here with me. Uh-uh. Right here. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Right here. Stay with me. Thank you, Lord. Stay with me. I remember a few years ago, Caden was just a little baby. And he, well, he was talking, so he, he might have been two years old. He spent the night with me, and he, he was up, up and down all night. He spent the night with me the next night. He's up and down all night. And that third night, we laid down, and I said, listen. I said, you see right over there standing in that corner? He said, yeah, that's your gun. I said, that's my gun. It's loaded. And I said, right up here on my headboard is my pistol, and it's loaded. There is nothing ever coming in this house going to hurt you, mess with you, or bother you. Your papa has got you, and you'll always be safe when you're with me. And he laid down and slept all night, and he never got up. Because he understood nothing was coming in to get him. He was safe. I understand today that when I'm saved by the grace of God, I've been sealed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm safe. The devil can't get me. He'll poke at me. He'll prod at me. He'll throw things at me. He'll try to drag me down. But he cannot possess me. He cannot get me. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit already possesses me. He's already down inside. Uh, he came in my heart. He sealed that thing shut. And the devil can't get in there, amen. Amen. Praise God. Bless him, Lord. But he'll wear on this outside body if we let him. But because greater is he that's in me than he's in the world, I'm going to let he that's in me help me with this outside part too. Amen. But I need help with the outside part. Amen. 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 Number 17. And we're going to close with this one. In my trial, he promises to protect me. Amen. Amen. Yes. I, I get a shield of protection around me. That no matter what storm I'm going through, no matter how rough the battle is, no matter what Satan is throwing at me, I've got a shield around me that God has put there that protects me. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. He said, when all of these things come against you, uh, uh, I, and, and we back up in the verse before that, he said, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Amen. And that's why he protects us, because we belong to him. Amen. He protects us. Nothing is going to hurt us. Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. My God has sent his angel, has shut the lion's mouths, uh, that they have not hurt me. Uh, for as much as before him, uh, innocency was found in me. Uh, and also before thee, O king, uh, have I done no hurt. Uh, oh, this is a story of Daniel. Uh, uh, the Bible said the king has written a decree. Uh, and in that decree, uh, he said for the next 30 days... Uh, Nobody can pray to any other God or, or ask any petition of any other God or any other king uh, except me uh, for 30 days. Uh, he didn't say forever or a lifetime, just 30 days. Uh, uh, but old Daniel said, uh, uh, listen, uh, I can't go 30 days without praying. Uh, I can't even go one day. Uh, and he went in his house, uh, and the Bible said he opened a window toward the east, toward Jerusalem, uh, and he began to pray, uh, just like he had been doing days and weeks and years before, uh, three times a day. Uh, he'd done this and prayed. Oh, uh, uh, listen. Uh, and the Bible said the princes uh, uh, heard him, and they went running to the king. Oh, uh, uh, listen. said, boy, he's over there praying and talking to his God. Uh, you got to do something about it. Uh, and the old king, uh, now he liked Daniel. Daniel was his favorite among everybody. Uh, uh, but he had to stick to the law. Uh, and the law said, that he had to be thrown in the lion's den. Uh, oh, listen, and it broke his heart. Uh, uh, but Daniel was cast in the lion's den. Uh, and the Bible 
Bible said they sealed it up. And the king sealed it with his own ring and his own signet that it could be opened by anybody but him. And the Bible said he went home that night and said he couldn't eat, he couldn't sleep, wouldn't let him play the music. He was distraught over his friend that he had committed to death. And he got up the next morning and the Bible said he ran with haste and got down there and said, Oh, Daniel, is your God able to save you? This king must have done something because, listen, if it had been me, I would have thought, well, he got eight last night. It ain't nothing. But the old king said, I know this guy's got something going on with God. He's told dreams. He's foretold things. There's something special. Something special might have happened last night. Amen. And he got in there. Oh, Daniel, is your God you serve able to deliver? And he said right there, Oh, king, as much as innocent as he was found in me, God sent his angels and shut the lines around. I'm still here. I'm alive and well. I fluffed up one of them and I slept good. How about you? The old king said, Nope, I was worried about you all night. Old Daniel said, Well, no need to worry about me. God's got me, amen, and I'm all right. And they opened up the lion's pit, and they turned Daniel loose. And all them boys, listen, they had lied on Daniel. They throwed all of them in there. They throwed their kids in there. They throwed their wives in there. And the lions ate every one of them, amen. Yeah. Be careful when you come against a man of God. Because there may be a lion in your future, amen. 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 <coughs> I wouldn't do that. Oh, listen, let me say this. There could be a bear in your future. Most all of God's men always had long hair. But there was a few that didn't. And there was one called Elisha. Got him a double portion of some spirit. That man, he was loaded with the power. And the Bible said he was bald-headed. And the Bible said he was going up to the city to do some preaching. And a bunch of kids come out of the city and met him and started making fun of him because he was bald-headed. Go up, you old bald-head. Go up, you old bald-head. And the Bible said he turned around and looked at all them kids and he cursed them. And two bears come out of the woods and ate 42 of them kids. Be careful what you say. If there ain't a lion in your future, there could be a bear. Right. <laughs> Amen. The Bible said, touch not my anointed. Be careful. Amen. Amen. Oh, listen. I've seen some lions. This thing's pretty big. And I've seen some bears. And they're pretty big, too. I don't know if y'all ever been up in Tennessee and seen a real bear. They got, they, the bigger the bear, the bigger the claws. And they got claws. This thing stick way out there. They get long. They don't have to hit you with a paw. They just got to get within striking distance in claws. And you in trouble. They'll shred you up. Amen. Got to be careful what we say and what we do. Amen. Amen. But listen, God promises to protect me. The Bible says, The devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who he may devour. It does not say he is a lion. It says as a lion. He's pretending to be. Because we know the lion of the tribe of Judah is Jesus Christ. He's the true lion. The devil's just pretending to be. The devil's pretending to be a lion and growling, trying to scare you. Well, guess what? I'm not worried about that. His bark's worse than his bite. Amen? He can't bite me. All he do is bark, and I ain't worried about it. Amen? I ain't worried about it. I'm saved by the grace of God. I'm going to heaven. There ain't nothing the devil can do about it. <clears throat> he can put all the chains he wants, try to hold me down. But I promise you this, when I hear the trumpet sound, ain't nothing going to hold me down. Amen. I'm heaven bound. Amen. Leaving the ground. Amen. 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 Brother Tony, if you would, get us a verse of